Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we're going to be talking about Andrew Cuomo and how he gave a message at a church this past Sunday, uh, March 6th, 2022. And it was a lot of whining, it was a lot of complaining, it was a lot of I'll be back, but without the cool bravado of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, with that said, we're going to be going into the, his message and how it was during a worship service for a Branch Covidian church in New York City. So, uh, so let's just dive right on in. Don't forget to like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel to support Christian content like this. Our community still, still we're not getting the amount of vaccinations that we needed because people were coming from different communities. He opened up Mega Everest College. His experience at the federal level, he brought FEMA into the heart of Brooklyn. And it was a mass vaccination site here in Brooklyn. I can go on and on and on. He's talking about the credentials of friend. Andrew Cuomo. He's a friend. And I never turn my back on friends. And so today with us, the former governor of New York, state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Let's bless the Lord for him. Oh, he took Good. his mask off. I didn't catch that. How great was that opening this morning? Wasn't that great? Let's give them a round of applause. To Bishop Cockfield and First Lady Cockfield and Reverend Cockfield, God bless you for what you do. Thank you for having me here today. And thank you for understanding. Thank you for understanding that a church is more than just four walls and reaching out to the community with health care and education and counseling. God bless you for what you do. Let's give them a round of applause. I like what he missed I do there find with the it gospel. That the bishop and the reverend are father and son. That must be an interesting relationship, working with your father like that, huh? I can't imagine what that is like. That must be tricky. Uh, but I also believe there is no greater sign of love and respect than when a son follows the legacy of his father. So God bless you. Uh, Andrew Cuomo, I believe, comes from a political dynasty, so, you know, he, he's speaking with experience here. We have been socially distanced, but we are always socially connected, and we are spiritually and socially connected here today. And I want to thank you for having me here today as we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent. Uh, as you probably know, I've gone through a difficult period the past few months. I resigned as governor, the press roasted me, my colleagues were ridiculed, my brother was fired. It was ugly. Oh. It was probably the toughest time of my life. Oh, so tough. And it was tough. the first time that I was glad that my father wasn't here with us anymore so he didn't have to see it. Now, I haven't spoken about it in Who's public yet. Who's clapping over that? Because I wanted to talk about it here with you because God's guidance is helping me through. <laughs> let go, let go, let God. I believe in life. God sends us challenges. Life will knock us down at some point. And then the question is, what do we do in that moment? Do we get angry? Do we feel sorry for ourselves? Or do we learn from it and get up from the mat? But it is hard. It is very hard. It's a struggle. It's a bridge that one needs to cross, and it's a long bridge. This is the worst rocky speech I've ever heard someone try to do. <laughs> but Maybe the bridge the goes worst, from anger to like acceptance, from, pulpit... from resentment to reconciliation. I am now working to cross that bridge. And I believe that God has a reason for our path. I pray on it, and the good book has offered me guidance. Psalm 46 tells us God is our refuge, and therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way. The Lord tells us that our suffering is part of life, and our suffering actually teaches us compassion. And the crossing of the bridge starts with telling the truth. That is the toll that one must pay. Even when the truth is hard, because in life you will never solve a problem you Let's are unwilling the truth. to admit. So let me tell you my truth. Oh, let me get it off my chest so we can talk about his important truth. issues that we face today. My father, God rest his soul, used to say government is an honorable profession, but that politics can be a dirty business. Now that is especially true today when this politics out there is so mean and so extreme. When even the Democratic Party chooses to cancel people that they have a disagreement with. Last February, several women raised issues about my behavior. 
As I said then, and as I say to you in this holy hall today, my behavior has been the same for 40 years in public life. You have seen me many, many times, and that has been my behavior. But that was actually the problem. Because for some people, especially younger people, there's a new sensitivity. No one ever told me I made them feel uncomfortable. I never sensed that I caused anyone uh. discomfort. I was trying to do the exact opposite, but I've been called old-fashioned, out of touch, and I've been told that my behavior was not political. <laughs> He's like so right and so wrong at the same time. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. This was worth the price of admission here. Uh, minus the fact that you're going to an apostate church, but other other than that, uh, just to hear him just, yeah, like what he's saying, yeah, yeah, new sensitivity, yeah, that part's true, but like, dude, come on, man, come on, come on. Correct. He's not broken. perverted, he's that. Italian. I accept that. Social norms <laughs> evolve, and they evolve quickly. And, we are, and we're proud of the evolution. It is progress. But I didn't appreciate how fast their perspective changed. And I should have. No excuse. Their perspective didn't I change. Truly, truly you don't walk up to someone. You don't just kiss a random woman. You don't just do that. That's not a change in perspective. You're just not as good looking as you used to be. Sorry. I've apologized many times. And I've learned a powerful lesson, and I paid a very high price for learning that lesson. God isn't finished with me yet. And every day, I ask him for his guidance to help me grow and to help me learn. However, the truth is also that contrary to what my political opponents would have had you believe, nothing I did violated the law or the regulation. I said from the start that I would defend any allegation that anyone wanted to bring. But the political sharks in Albany smelled blood. And when the sharks smell blood, then they come. And they exploited the situation for their political purpose. Now, they did a report that said there were 11 cases against me. Since then, since last August, five district attorneys have investigated the report of the much publicized 11 violations of law. And do you know how many cases of the 11 they found to bring? How many of the 11? What's your guess? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 0, 0, 0 cases. Okay, just because zero attorneys brought the case against him does not mean he didn't violate the law. Like, let's not pretend that those attorneys aren't political. They don't recognize the political ramifications of indicting him. Uh, Andrew Cuomo was removed for a few reasons. The so first is that, you know, I, I believe the attorney general is now the governor of New York or something like that. She wanted to step over a dead body. She needed, she wanted to ascend to that seat, had the political cutthroat instincts to do it. Uh, additionally, the murders. Are we not going to talk about the murders, the people that he murdered in the nursing homes? Are we not going to talk about that? I thought you said truth was the toll that you had to pay, and he's not telling the truth here. Not the whole truth, because that was going to bite him. Why? Because there is a difference between an individual's opinion as to what they believe is offensive behavior and a legal violation. You can have an opinion about what is right and wrong, but that doesn't make your opinion the law. State Assembly and Charles Levine did a fraudulent, unethical report looking at state nursing homes and my management of state nursing homes during COVID. And they were critical. The Manhattan District Attorney investigated those claims and those policies and said no laws were broken. So what does it mean? Again, you really think that a district attorney from Manhattan is going to indict a sitting or former governor? No way, Jose. We see this corruption happen in Maryland all the time. Uh, you know... We can't even get Democrats to impeach Larry Hogan in Maryland. And it was a Republican who brought the uh, impeachment. Uh, uh, Dan Cox, he's running for governor. So people don't indict people like Cuomo. It does not happen. There's no justice for that class. He, he's, th this is a logical fallacy. That six district attorneys 
from all across the state, Democrats and Republicans, male and female, black and white, tens of millions of dollars spent in investigations. Your money, not theirs. And they didn't find a single case. So 11 months later, the truth is known. But it's too late. Justice too long delayed is justice denied. The report did the damage it was designed to do. My father was right. Politics can be a dirty business. I've always then loved why this resign? Thing. I've been to every part of it, and I love it. And I believe in government's capacity to do good. The way the Reverend learned from the bishop, I learned from my father. And working Political in public dynasty. service was one of the most honorable professions you could have. I learned that. I believed it. But seeing what they did here, seeing the abuse of power, seeing the government corruption broke my heart. And I'm trying to cross the bridge. And I'm trying to get from a negative place to a positive place. Romans 5, we can find glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, get up off the mat. We just celebrated Black History Month. Congressman John Lewis was a great hero, a man I had the good fortune no, to go and work with. He started with Dr. King, actually, crossing, crossing the most transformative bridge, the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Alabama, which we commemorate tomorrow. Congressman Lewis said these words, do not get lost in the sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, a year, but a struggle of a lifetime. Never ever be afraid to make some noise to get in good trouble, necessary trouble. I find inspiration in those words. Genesis tells us that good can come from suffering and that life is about tomorrow, not yesterday. They broke my heart, but they didn't break my spirit. I want to take the energy that that could make me bitter and use that energy to make us better. Not for me, but for others, for all of us. And again, it starts with telling the truth. My situation is illustrative of a larger issue that must be addressed because it endangers us all. The truth, the truth is the so-called cancer culture mentality is growing and is dangerous is and Democrats cancer? must beware. The <laughs> actions against me, the actions against me were prosecutorial misconduct. That is clear. They didn't act in the interest of justice. The district attorneys proved that. They acted in their own self-interest. They wanted me out because they wanted my job. We know that was their motivation. Then why their did you resign? Actions. But they actually used the cancel culture mentality to enable and advance their self-serving political scheme. Let me ask you this. Why did they announce to the world 11 legal violations by me when the district attorney, attorneys showed they couldn't even prove one case. You know why? They wanted to create a shock value. They wanted to inflame the cancel culture. They wanted to light up the internet. They wanted to stampede the press and the politicians. They wanted to do with politics that which they couldn't do with the law. They used cancel culture to effectively overturn an election. And that was their greatest arrogance. They didn't elect me, you did. If they wanted my job, or if the Democratic extremists believed I was in their way, or if they didn't like me, or if they didn't like my politics, fine. Defeat me in an election. This is America's governor, at least according to the, you know, in 2020, he's being called America's governor. Uh, he was being praised for his Branch Covidian devotion. The guy was a tyrant. And this audience is just, this audience went to church. Well, they went to a pagan temple, I should say. A synagogue of Satan would probably be the most biblical way to put it. And they're hearing this politician obfuscate what he did, the evil that he did. Uh, and just... This just is so such crap that they're hearing. But that is America. You decide. Who are they to override your choice? What happened to voting rights and democratic elections, our cherished priorities? With cancel culture, we now live in a frightening new world. We've never been here before. Any accusation can trigger condemnation without facts, without due process. We are a nation of laws. We are not a nation of tweets. Twitter and newspaper headlines have replaced a judge and a jury. Then and why we'll did you to resign? And to become our new justice system. The cancel culture mindset is antithetical to the principles of the Democratic Party because cancel culture is about intolerance and exclusion. The Democratic Party 
is premised on tolerance and inclusion. We say the Democratic Party is a big tent party, which means we try to reconcile differences. We don't revile them. Social media and Twitter spread cancel culture like a virus. They allow the extreme minority to overpower the reasonable majority. And I'll tell you this, when the emotion of the mob overcomes the integrity of the justice system, the intelligence of sound policy debate, and honest analysis by the press, we are lost. Pause right there because two years ago, you know, March 2020, what about the sound debate then? What about reason then? Instead, the scared were not even scared elites, but the elites who wanted to use uh, this, they wanted to use the opportunity to seize power and wealth. And, you know, Andrew Cuomo was a part of that. He's an evil guy. There is no doubting that. And he was among the worst. And among the most celebrated. And now he's decrying cancel culture. This cancel culture represents a new extremism. And we've seen a similar phenomenon before among the Republicans with the Tea Party. Do you remember the Tea Party? In many ways, the Tea Party founded what we now call the cancel culture mentality because no. the Tea Party was hyper-aggressive, dogmatic, and insisted on their rabid ideology. And there was no patience, no compromise, no discussion. The Tea Party alienated many thoughtful Republicans because extremism does that by its very nature. Yeah. Now, Democrats those, those Republicans exalted were Democrats. being called progressive. Who's the most progressive? I'm more progressive than you're progressive. I tweeted before you tweeted. That means I'm more progressive than you are because you're a slow tweeter. I'll tell you today, there is no result that is progressive that is achieved by means that are regressive. And that's what we're doing today. Don't underestimate the strength and the virulence of the cancel culture. It's not just in politics. Today, even some members of the press are afraid to ask questions that challenge the so-called politically correct cancel culture thinking. Do you know how many reporters told me they knew the report against me was a fraud, but they were afraid to challenge Me Too claims? Democrats are a hive mind. That's why Andrew Cuomo resigned. He resigned, and here, here's my theory, and this, this event totally backs up my theories. He resigned with the promise that he could come back. He could come back. Maybe he'll run for Senate. Maybe he can run for governor again. He was promised the ability to come back. Maybe he'll get a cabinet position one of these days. And that's what this tour is. This is a rehab tour so that they can bring him back into the fold. He's done his part. Uh, he helped the Democrats not hemorrhage. Well, not necessarily. He was a lightning rod for criticism. And they helped. And he helped them to avoid that by taking that issue off the table. So he did his part. Now, this is his rehab tour so that the Democrats will do their part because they are a hive mind. They are the Borg Collective and everyone will be assimilated. And with this hive mind that will assimilate you, if you allow it to, he is high enough to be given this rehab program from cancel culture. That's what this is all about. That's why he's at this Democrat synagogue of Satan and not preaching the word of God on a Sunday morning. Instead, he's trying to pontificate about his own life experiences in, some, in a greater display of narcissism than what you see at a Stephen Furtick or Craig Rochelle. My brother Christopher was fired. Oh, Chris Cuomo was fired. Such a pain I can't even describe. Christopher is my little brother. He Fredo. had nothing to do with anything. They fired him and they said he violated a journalistic rule. He wasn't reporting on the story. He wasn't a journalist. You he was a brother. Let... And by the way, everybody knew he was my brother. You don't let him CNN interview. used the relationship to their benefit when it suited them. That's true. I would go on the air with my brother Chris. I don't know if you saw the show. I was the smart, good-looking brother. He was the other one. Uh -huh, but what really was happened bad. was... Giants like CNN and Time Warner and AT&T and big shot billionaires like John Malone and John Stanky, they were in the middle of a merger. And they were afraid of the cancel culture mob. Cancer so they culture. fired Chris. That's the truth. 
and there'll be a day where they're going to have to raise their hand and tell the truth, and then you will know. The Washington Post masthead said, democracy dies in darkness. Well, you know what? Democracy dies in silence also. Now, the cancel culture creates another major problem for the Democratic Party. We just heard from national elections, and the Democrats lost. And now the Democrats are nervous about the midterm elections. And we should be. When you are driving down the road, and there is a flashing sign, and the flashing sign says, cliff ahead, pay attention. And we should be worried about the midterms. The Democratic Party is spending too much time arguing amongst themselves, canceling each other, and pontificating about their ideal rather than focusing on what's real. Do you know what's real? Does he know what's real? Like, are we, are we just, are we really going off about, like, uh, what's his face? Dan, uh, Joe Manchin and uh, Kirsten Cinema? Is that really? Because th th that, those are the only uh, defects in this board collective. And, you know, Joe Manchin's a legacy, so they can't replace him. If they didn't have Joe Manchin, there'd be some rhino in that seat. And then Kirsten Cinema is like the most conservative senator out of Arizona, and like, uh, I, I think one of the people that replaced the the guy that initially replaced the uh, John McCain rotten hell, uh, he was pretty conservative, I believe. But otherwise, uh, yeah, Kirsten Cinema, like Arizona does not know how to elect conservatives because the GOP really clamps down on conservative candidates. What's real is schools in poor areas that don't teach. That's real. Public housing without heat, homeless on the streets, muggings in subways, young people dying every day, crime and grime. I wonder New why they're dying. Backwards, not is forwards. The... That's what's real to you and to us. Mayor Eric Adams is real, and he is right. They say defund the police. What does that even mean? Listen to the words. Unless you live in a Manhattan high-rise with private security and six doormen guarding you, when you dial 911 in the middle of the night, you want someone to come. <laughs> Do you know what else is real? What's real is the transcendent threat to our democracy by, that comes in two words, Donald Trump. Now, oh. I've known Donald Trump for years, and I have fought him for years, and I know what he will do. While Democrats are busy infighting, Trump is out mobilizing. And they are strategically organizing to override the election system when they don't like the outcome. Okay, Democrats are not doing a whole lot of infighting. That's projection. Or that that's just that's that's nonsense. Republicans are doing the infighting right now. Uh, you know, we're saying uh, we're going to talk about. Okay, so this Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to do a live stream this week on Trump Social. So we're going to talk a lot about Trump uh, this week, and. Uh, you know, there, there's a huge division in the Republican Party. Do we want to go with Trump? Do we want to go with someone new? That's someone new predominantly being Ron DeSantis. And, you know, obviously Trump can rig a CPAC poll to his advantage. By rig, I mean, like, it was his people stacking the deck. But, you know, do we really want Tulsi Gabbard as part of a Republican, despite the fact that she's a socialist? And she's too pro-abortion to be a Republican. So do we really want her as a Republican, as a conservative? Do we really want to brand people like that? Um, so it's just such a nonsense take. And do you know when they don't like the outcome? They don't like the outcome when you vote and when they lose. We see Stump Trump starting his own news network. You know what he calls it? Truth. Which Social is media site. as ironic as it is diabolical. Now, Trump is appealing to the far right, and he'll exploit the fear, the frustration, and the hate. Trump will attack Democrats, who describe themselves as socialists, and he's going to allege that the Democratic Party is now an American. Trump will say Democrats controlled everything, the presidency, the Senate, the House, and they got nothing done. I can hear him now. Crime went up, inflation went up, the stock market went down, and Russia invaded Ukraine, and tens of thousands suffered. And let us remember them in our prayers today. Uh, for what they are going through. We cannot let the politics of hate and division win. And it's not enough to demonize Trump. People already know who he is. They know him. It's not enough to attack Trump. It's up to the Democrats to show why the people of this nation should allow Democrats to lead. Now, there's still time, but we have to do it, and we have to do it now. And it starts by looking in the mirror. 
and remembering who we are and what made the Democratic Party special in the first place. And what made us special is we told the nation, while in many ways... What made the Democrat Party special in the first place was Andrew Jackson decided to end the National Bank, which was based, by the way. He, just, he wanted to take on the Freemasons, which was based, by the way. And, uh, you know, then, you know, even Martin Van Buren wasn't bad either. And then uh, James Polk was also pretty good as a president. So what made the Democrat Party special was their first few presidents. It didn't really stay on the high ground after that. And then they became a left wing party after the Civil War. Ways we are a shining city on a hill. The truth is that still not everyone everywhere is sharing in that splendor and glory. The bright sun of opportunity and equality does not shine on everyone everywhere. There are too many living in the shadows. And Democrats spoke for those in the shadows, without power or position, but with potential and promise. And most important, the Democratic Party did something about it. It made an actual difference in people's lives. It passed Social Security and Medicare. It built the labor movement. We suck. in New York showed that that Democrat, Democratic Party can still exist. Our Democratic Party improved lives. Look at what we did. We raised the minimum wage to $15. We passed the strongest gun safety laws. We enacted free college tuition for the middle class. We enacted paid family leave. We changed lives and we led the nation. Biden announced this week he's still trying to pass the same measures that we passed years ago. Look around you in Brooklyn today. The new Kosciuszko Bridge, the new L train tunnel, the new Moynihan train hall, the new LaGuardia, the new JFK, the new Shirley Chisholm State Park, all improving your life. Okay, theory alert. Um, I don't think the Democrats want Kamala Harris in 2024 because, you know, let's face it, Joe Biden could croak any day now. That's just a blunt way to put it. He could croak any day now. Andrew Cuomo, back from rehab, has name ID, could do it. And if, you know, Donald Trump is the person against them, the Me Too argument's really off the table. It really is. So, that could be the strategic play here is Andrew Cuomo for president once more now that he's rehabbed uh and against Donald Trump and nobody wants Kamala Harris nobody does and when this country faced the greatest threat Reverend Cockfield is right the greatest threat during COVID it was New Yorkers not the president of the United States who stood up, who told the truth, who led the way, and we saved many, many lives. No, you murdered people. You murdered people. So, yes. And let's go back to the biblical definition of murder. It's murder with hatred. There is no distinction in the Old Testament law between first and second degree murder. It's murder with hatred or he committed manslaughter. I would say he had the hatred component and the way he handled, uh, way he handled things and that killed people and i believe that was deliberate i believe that was with hatred hatred towards fellow man this is a time for impatience but constructive impatience if you want to cancel something cancel federal gridlock cancel the incompetence cancel the infighting cancel crime cancel homelessness cancel education inequality cancel poverty cancel racism be outraged but be outraged at what really matters and what really matters is what matters to you my last point is this a woman asked me today if I was at peace. Now that is an interesting question. Let me say this, I am not across the bridge yet, but I know that I am blessed, and I know that God has been much better to me than I deserve. I have three magnificent daughters, I have a great family, I have friends who have rallied, and now the truth has actually come forth and I feel vindicated. And I had the honor of serving you as governor of the state of New York, and that is the honor of my life. And I'm proud of how we did it. I'm proud that I'm proud that I can look at you today in the eye and say, I did what I said I would do. You elected me to fight for you, to fight back against the Albany hacks, the flax, and the bureaucrats, to say hell no to the status quo, to make government work for you and not the special interest few, to make New York the best. Be These are some nice political one-liners, but come on, man. Come on. We're not, I, I, maybe your audience is full of toothless newborns. Oh, but come on. I, I see right through that. 
I see right through that. Like, I'm not impressed by these lines. These cliche lines he's dropping. Because we believe we are better than the rest. You didn't elect me to suffer fools gladly. State government was dysfunctional when you elected me. You didn't elect me to play nice in the sandbox with the Albany politicians. You elected me to go there and take the sand and build something for you, and we did. So I am blessed, my friends. I have many options in life, and I'm open to all of them. But on the question if I am at peace, no, I am not at peace. But by the way, I don't want to be at peace either. And by the byway, I don't think you should be at peace either. We have too much work to do to be at peace. We can be at peace when they put us in the box and they close the top. We can rest in peace. But right now, we have to rise up, brothers and sisters. Right now, we have to fight the good fight because the struggle continues. We have to stand up for progressive politics in a government that does what it says it would do and makes a real difference. We have to stand up against the radical right and their demagogues. We have to stand up and say, we don't judge by the color of skin in this nation. We judge by the content of character. We have to stand Democrats. up and say, I am my brother's keeper. And I'm proud of it. And I believe in Matthew 20. Again, brother's keeper is such a misused line. And this is actually the first time he's uh, gone to scripture in like, I don't know, 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, we should not be affirming Cain's sarcastic remarks. Like, the, the message of Genesis 4 is not to champion that line. It is not that we're our brother's keeper. It, it was a sarcastic remark of Cain. Come on, man. Come on. And let's say the greatest success is the success that is shared. And the greatest feast is the feast with the most number of people at the table. Let's make some trouble. Let's make some good trouble. And let's make this state the greatest state in the nation. Thank you and God bless you. So, yeah, they still have another hour of this church service left. And again, he just gave a political rally at a during a church service. And it's absurd. Who, who allows this? <laughs> Obviously, the Democrats do. That's a synagogue of Satan. I shouldn't use the word church as much, but it gets the message across. It, it's, you know, the normies understand the word church. So, with that said, it's a false church, but that's still a church. So, again, so key takeaways. I think Andrew Cuomo might be running for president in 2024. That's a possibility. Because what else is he going to run for? Senate? And he hasn't gotten a cabinet position yet. So, president. Uh, and this is his rehab tour. And this guy's just, he doesn't understand Republican politics whatsoever. And... Uh, he doesn't understand the Bible either. So these people, that was a synagogue of Satan. And it shows. It shows. That's why they had Andrew Cuomo up there lying with zero self-awareness. So that's all I got to say about that. Leave a comment below about what you think about what I think. I like the comment section. And uh, also subscribe to the channel. That's the least you can do to support content like this. Also like the video. If you didn't do so already and check out evangelicaldarkweb.org articles every day. Uh, we'll have an article on this. Also, you know, you can become a patron like subscriber there because Patreon cancels people. Speaking of cancel culture. Um, so you can do that. Have a blessed day. I will catch you on the next one.